Bunny is one of the most used characters in The First Descendant. Not only is she free, her area of effect abilities make farming a breeze. She's one of the fastest characters if you want to push through the story, and if you want to get to the end game, I highly recommend you build Bunny. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make her build exceptionally strong and give you enough survivability so that you don't die. Let's get started. It's really more easy than you might think. So leveling up to level 40 as fast as humanly possible is going to be one of the keys to one-shotting everything. As you level up, you're going to be more tanky, but you're also going to be increasing the base damage on your abilities. So any of your reactors or your mods are going to multiply that damage. The higher the base, the more those multipliers matter. And it's going to be extremely easy to one-shot everything. All you gotta do is power level. So how are we gonna do that? After you've played through the game and you've gotten Bunny, you can head over to Kingston and there's a defense mission and it's pretty easy to get to this. Now, there's a lot of people doing this and power leveling right now, so if you're watching this video today and you jump in, there's a very good chance there's other people in this mission right now with a maxed out Bunny carrying their friends or just trying to level up their own guns. This is one of the most optimal ways to weapon up uh, or to level up your weapons, to level up your characters. It's extremely effective. So, jump in, max out your bunny, and then everything else we talk about is going to be even more powerful. One of the pros of getting your bunny up to level 40 as soon as possible is you're also going to get a ton of mastery rank experience. Just leveling up bunny to 40 and the guns that you have equipped at the time will be enough to give you probably a mastery rank 8, 9, potentially even 10. The amount of mastery rank you get ramps up, so if you just go in and you hammer it out with the exact same guns and just get Bunny to 40, you're going to get a lot of extra capacity on your weapons and your character. But that's the most important part. Now, I'm going to have to make a whole guide on this, but there's a few different options that I would recommend. Technician just boosts up your skill power so you get more damage. Skill expansion increases the area of effect so you can one-shot enemies from further away. And this increases the range of things like your grenade and your double jump ability. So even if you don't have your E ability and you're one-shotting everything with that, your other abilities will just nuke them from a mile away. But this is why I would also recommend holding on to multiple different mods. If you realize, ah, I don't actually need this much damage, I could trash this mod and throw something else in that gives me more range or cooldowns or whatever it might be to make the run smoother. So I really do recommend you hold down at least two or even three copies of mods at different levels to slot in depending on your capacity. As for your reactor, Honestly, as long as you're leveled up, you're using decent mods, just equipping the highest level one is good enough to one-shot most mobs in the game, whether it's early, mid, or pushing into late game. But, obviously, if you've got a good role where you can land all the different, um, you know, optimization conditions, that's gonna be better. But, you get a massive boost just from doing that first condition, that 40% bonus, and if you can do the other ones down below, that's great. You want to maximize anything that is going to boost the damage of your third ability. That is going to be the key for fast farming and the one you're going to be using the most. Now, obviously, if you could use something that has optimization conditions like this, where you can equip uh, the unique weapon to get 160% boost, and you can do those conditions, this is going to be super good. But it's rare to find these. It's rare to be able to fulfill all the conditions. And you also need to get the good passives, you know, down here, those blue ones as well. There's a lot of different things, but essentially, if the number is green, equip it. Equip it, and don't even think about it. Move on, you'll replace this stuff very quickly. One of the last things I want to talk about is the weapons. Because honestly, the weapons don't really matter that much, because again, you're going to replace them like crazy. They give you a thunder cage, and you're going to outscale it rapidly. They're going to give you a dupe of the Thunder Cage that you can feed in and bring up the power. But a lot of these unique weapons, they're going to be good late game. When you can get the perfect roll, you can max out the passive when you've crafted five of them. But a lot of the other weapons in game have way higher DPS. I don't know if this thing is bugged, but this thing has insane DPS. Like almost the level of a heavy weapon and it's level 54. You're going to rapidly replace every item that you use until the end game, and so 
Who cares? Just equip whatever has the highest DPS and call it a day, essentially. Uh, this stuff is, is, is essentially like 10 to 15 minutes of gameplay, and you'll probably find an upgrade. Now, as for your defensive options, there's actually set gear that you can farm from the particular intercept bosses, the void intercept bosses. So this is from the ice boss, and it's going to boost up chill skill power. But there is one for the electric stuff. I just haven't farmed it because it's not high enough level. It's trash gear. But you can farm for this eventually, and that is going to be the meta, getting a good roll with good passives on set. But for everyone else, just equip whatever is giving you survivability. And if you can get things like uh, mana recovery or, or uh, resistances to help keep you alive, that's all that's really going to matter. The other recommendation that I have is anything that's going to boost things like character experience or something like this that's giving you firearm proficiency because it's going to help get your mastery levels up sooner. This stuff is, is again, uh, it's minor in the grand scheme of things, but anything that can quality of life help you grind is going to be a bonus in the early game. Later on, if you need to build resistances, go for it. But again, you're going to replace this stuff really quick. Now, for the weapons, you just want stuff that you can auto-fire while you jump around and melt things with your abilities. And for me, even though this thing isn't perfect, it's a really good roll. It's got hip fire accuracy, it's got rounds in the magazine, and it's got some other base damage that's boosting it up. I really, really like this one, and it's got really good DPS, and I just kind of hip fire it as I go. If I'm fighting a boss down the road and I want weak point damage or whatever, I will do that later, but for right now, don't care too much about the weapons, but something like this, where it's got base damage and, and maybe some, um, you know, quality of life stuff, that is good enough. As for the mods, I would highly recommend you focus on your Descendant and leveling these ones up first. It gets very expensive from thousands into the tens of thousands to get one upgrade on some of the key mods that you'll be using. Again, we need to get further into the game before we really do a, a, a mod guide, but anything that's going to make your skills more effective is going to be something that's going to be useful on any different descendant in the game. Weapons are going to get replaced so rapidly. The weapon types that you're using and the ammo types, uh, I would not focus on these in the early game. And that's it. Power level to 40, equip a good reactor, and you're pretty much going to be quick farming everything in the game. Bunny is exceptional for pushing through the story and getting other weapons leveled up and ready to go, and I would recommend pretty much everyone use her to clear the majority of the story. That's what I'm doing, and I'm going to use other units for things like boss fights down the road. She's still fine in boss fights, but she really excels in the trash mobs and the actual campaign type content. Thanks for watching, have a good day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.